Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel All About VLSA. In this video, we are going to discuss about how we are going to communicate our sequence with our sequencer. In my previous video, at the end of the video, I have asked one question that how the sequence going to identify where the sequencer is. This was my question. So basically, your sequence is a standalone class. It is a standalone class. It is not involved in the test bench hierarchy. Whereas your sequencer is involved in a test bench hierarchy like this test environment agent and here we have our sequencer and we have our driver. So how the sequence it is going to identify where the sequencer it is. Okay. So this is what we are going to learn in our session. So our agenda is how the sequence it is finding out where the sequencer it is in the test bench, test bench hierarchy and how it is establishing the communication with the sequencer and how the sequence it is communicating with the sequencer. Now, so basically uh, if a sequence is started communication with the sequencer, that is if a sequence starts communicating with the sequencer and starts sending the data, then this particular process is nothing but starting a sequence onto a sequencer. The process of sending a sequence items from the sequence to the sequencer, this whole process is known as starting a sequence onto a sequencer. So basically starting a sequence onto a sequencer that means uh, nothing but executing a sequence on a specified sequencer so that the sequence can generate and send its sequence items to the driver through the sequencer. This process is known as starting a sequence onto a sequencer. So in UVM uh, it is typically done by using start method. Okay. So we are going to use a start method which is going to establish a connection between your sequence and sequencer and the sequence items are sent from the sequence to the sequencer when we use this start method. So where are we using the start method? We are using the start method inside our test class. So inside our test class we are using the start method so that our sequence is going to communicate with our sequencer. How we are going to use the start method? So in the test method first what we are going to do is in the test class what we are going to do is we are going to first declare the sequence handle. We are going to declare the sequence handle and we are going to create the instance using this handle. We are going to create the instance using this handle. Now after creating the instance for this handle, what we are going to do is using this uh, created instance, we are going to call the start method. So let's say suppose sequence h dot start method and what are the argument which we are going to pass in the start method? We are going to pass the path for this sequence. We are going to pass the path for the sequencer in the argument of the start method. Okay, So this is how we are establishing the sequence and sequencer connection using our test class. So here we can see, so my underscore sequence it is a handle name dot start and my underscore sequencer. Actually here we should mention the path. Okay, So the start method assigns the sequence ha sequencer handle in this case my underscore sequencer to the sequence internal variable often known as m underscore sequencer. So what is happening actually, so when we are calling the start method and when we are passing the path to the sequencer, then what is happening is this sequencer handle which we have passed in the form of path, this will be assigned to a internal variable which is known as m underscore sequencer, which is known as m underscore sequencer. So what is this m underscore sequencer? Let us try to understand what is this m underscore sequencer. Let me erase this all. So our parent class is sequence underscore item and from the sequence underscore item we have our UVM uh, transaction and uh, UVM sequence and also I will show here in the diagram. So we have our UVM object, UVM object uh, has UVM transaction, UVM sequence item, UVM sequence base, UVM sequence and user defined sequence. Okay. So this is the hierarchy. Now, so UVM sequence item is going to have an internal variable which is known as M underscore sequencer. So UVM sequence item class is having a internal variable which is known as M underscore sequencer. So this is the handle of nothing but this is the handle for UVM underscore sequencer. 
So this UVM sequencer handle which is nothing but M underscore sequencer that will be present inside your UVM underscore sequence underscore item. Now when we are extending our class that is nothing but UVM underscore sequence which is a child class for this UVM underscore sequence underscore item. So this M underscore sequencer is also accessible by this UVM underscore sequence. Okay. So this is the uh, hierarchy which is present. So once again I will explain you. So the M underscore sequencer it is an internal handle which is present inside your UVM underscore sequence underscore item. Now what is this M underscore sequencer to which class it is going to belong. So you M underscore sequencer it is an internal handle of uh, it is uh, it is a handle of our UVM underscore sequencer. So UVM underscore sequencer class handle which is known as M underscore sequencer which is internally declared inside your class which is known as UVM underscore sequence underscore item. And since the UVM sequence it is a child class of UVM underscore sequence underscore item. So it can access M underscore sequencer class. So it can access so it can access M underscore sequencer handle also. And whatever the user defined classes which we have which we declare in our test bench and whatever the user defined UVMs uh, and whatever the user defined sequence class which we define inside our test bench that will also have the access to this M underscore sequencer. So by default so whenever you declare your UVM sequence user defined class whenever you declare simply your user defined UVM sequence class so internally your user defined sequence class is already corrected with your UVM sequencer because it is already having the access to the M underscore sequencer. Okay. So this is what it is happening initially. Now whenever you are calling the start method, whenever you are calling the start method inside your test, whenever you are calling the start method using the sequence handle sequence dot start. So the start method will be present in the sequence class UVM sequence class. Okay. Here the start method internally it will be present you are calling the start method. Now when you are calling the start method inside your test class what you are doing uh, you are passing the path to the sequencer what is the uh, what is the user defined sequencer you have des uh, defined user defined sequencer which you have derived from the parent uh, which is nothing but UVM sequencer. So you are passing that path instance you are passing the UVM you, you are passing the user defined sequencer you are passing the UVM user defined sequencer path this path you are passing to this start method first argument. Okay. So what is happening? So internally the handle to this user defined sequencer the internally the handle to the user defined sequencer that will be copied to this M underscore sequencer. So that the user defined sequence now will be passing to this user defined sequencer. I will explain this one more time. So what happens is by default there will be an internal handle that is M underscore sequencer which is already present in this UVM underscore sequence underscore item and so since this UVM underscore sequence it is a child class of this UVM underscore sequence item so this UVM underscore sequence is also having this M underscore sequencer so it is it is also having the access to this M underscore sequencer handle this M underscore sequencer it is nothing but it is the handle of this UVM underscore sequencer so by default this connection has been established okay now whenever you are creating your user defined sequence whenever you are creating your user defined sequence this user defined sequence is also having internally this access m underscore sequence or handle access so by default whenever you are declaring your user defined sequence it is being connected to your uvm underscore sequencer because you are having this access okay internally internally these are connected now so whenever you are calling the start method using this test class after creating the user defined sequencer what is happening you are passing the uh, path to this user defined sequencer you are passing the path to this user defined sequencer so what is happening so the handle which you have passed or the path which you have passed so the path which you have passed the path is nothing but the path to the sequencer which you have passed as the argument of the start method so according to that the handle of this uvm sequencer the user defined sequencer will be copied to this M underscore sequencer. Okay. So this is the process which is happening in the overall lame terms and there may be a in detail process that will be happening uh, in the internally but we are not uh, going to see about that 
but we are going to just explore it briefly what what will be happening okay so this is what it is happening so whenever you are calling the start method and when you are whenever you are passing the path to the uh, sequencer so that sequencer handle will be copied to this m underscore sequencer so that your user defined sequence will be uh, so that your user defined sequence will be pointing towards your user defined sequencer so this is how you are establishing the connection between your sequencer and sequence and whenever you are calling the start method inside your test class whenever you are calling the start method inside your test class then the body method which has been declared inside your uh, sequence class will be start executing and the randomizing thing everything will be starting started executing so this is the whole picture which is happening so the start method assigns the sequencer handle in the case my underscore sequencer to the sequences internal variable known as m underscore sequencer so this is uh, the this is what i have explained now and the sequences main stimulus logic the body task then executes sending the generated sequence items to the designated sequencer which in turns forward them to the driver so whenever you are calling the start task the body task will be internally called and the whatever logic you have written that will be generated and that will be sent it to the sequencer and the sequencer will forward them it to the driver so the start method which we have already discussed now so the most common way to launch a sequence is via the start method sequence dot start and the full path of the sequencer you are providing so the full path of the sequencer is a handle reference to the target sequencer so you, whatever the path you are passing in the start method that will become the handle for the sequencer user defined sequencer whatever the sequencer you are having suppose you have a sequence an environment and an agent within an environment called agent which contains a sequencer name sqr to start the sequence from a top level test to another sequencer so the call would look like this sequence dot start the path you are passing environment dot agent dot sequencer now this handle will be copied to m underscore sequencer which is present inside your sequence class so this sequence will now be uh, this sequence now will be sending the data to the sequencer using this uh, handle which you have passed okay so this is what it is happening so where is this m underscore sequencer variable defined now only we have discussed it so the m underscore sequencer variable is declared inside the source sequence uvm underscore sequence underscore item dot svh so this is the path where the m underscore sequencer which is present and since the uvm sequencer base and uvm sequence classes are both derivatives of uvm sequence item class they both inherit the uh, m underscore sequence declaration this is what i have discussed previously okay this is the written format which i have written okay and since the user defined sequences are derivatives of uvm sequence base class user sequences also inherit an m underscore sequencer handle okay every sequence must have a properly set m underscore sequencer handle that holds the handle of the sequencer where the user sequence is being executed okay this is what we have studied just now so what is the start method going to do so the sequences are started on a sequence sir you sequencer using the start method so the start method can take up to four arguments but we are only going to use only one argument which is the full path to the sequencer and the other three arguments have their default values and we are not going to modify them so this is the start task which is present and it is the first argument it is expecting uvm underscore sequencer underscore base of sequencer so this is how we are sending our random stimulus from our sequence to the sequencer okay so let me once again wrap up the conclusion what we have uh, discussed now so what is happening so the uvm sequence item it is the parent class which is having and we have a uvm sequencer it is also a parent class so this uvm sequencer class handle is present inside your uvm sequence item class as m underscore sequencer okay so this m underscore sequencer it is the handle of your uvm sequencer that means your uvm sequence item now can uh, send the data using this m underscore sequencer now this uvm sequence item class has a child which is known as uvm underscore sequence so this uvm underscore sequence is can is also having access to this m underscore sequencer because it is a child class so that this uvm underscore sequence now knows where is the uvm underscore sequencer okay because it is having the access to this handle now 
So this uvm underscore sequence from this we are uh, we are deriving our user defined we are def deriving our user defined sequence class. So the user defined sequence class is also having the m underscore sequencer. This is the default handle which are present. Now, so whenever we are declaring our user defined sequencer, user defined sequencer. Now, so this user defined sequencer uh, handle should be present with our user defined sequence so that this two can communicate with each other. Now, how we are establishing this communication? So in the test class, so we are having the sequence class handle sequence sqh, let's say sqh and after creating the instance of this handle, after creating the instance of this, what we are doing sqh dot start and we are passing the path to the sequencer. So what is the path? It is in the environment, it is in the environment dot agent dot sequencer. So this will be copied to your m underscore sequencer. So this will be copied to your m underscore sequencer. So now this user defined sequence will be pointing towards your user defined sequencer. And whenever we are calling the start method, two things are happening. One is assigning this m underscore sequencer to this uh, uh, the assigning this m underscore sequencer to the argument you have passed it. And uh, next is randomizing the data and sending the data and next is calling the body task. So what happens if you call the body task? The body task will basically randomize the things and it will send the data to the user defined sequencer. So this is how you are establishing the connection between your user defined sequence and user defined sequencer. Yes, so that's all about this particular video. So in our next session, we are going to see how we are establishing the, this path, how we are sending the data from the sequence to the sequencer, how we are connecting sequence, sequencer and driver, this and all things we are going to see in our next session with the help of one example, okay. Yes, so that's all about this video. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel, all about VLSI. Thank you for watching this video.